Lesson 1 Jesus wins, Satan loses. Sabbath afternoon, March 25. The fallen world is the battlefield for the greatest conflict the heavenly universe and earthly powers have ever witnessed. It was appointed as the theater on which would be fought out the grand struggle between good and evil, between heaven and hell. Every human being acts a part in this conflict. No one can stand on neutral ground. Men must either accept or reject the world's Redeemer. All are witnesses, either for or against Christ. Christ calls upon those who stand under his banner to engage in the conflict with him as faithful soldiers that they may inherit the crown of life. They have been adopted as sons and daughters of God. Christ has left them his assured promise that great will be the reward in the kingdom of heaven of those who partake of his humiliation and suffering for the truth's sake. Those who in the strength of Christ overcome the great enemy of God and man will occupy a position in the heavenly courts above angels who have never fallen. Sons and Daughters of God, page 242. Every step in life may bring us closer to Jesus, may give us a deeper experience of his love, and may bring us one step nearer to the blessed home of peace. Then let us not cast away our confidence, but have firm assurance, firmer than ever before. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us, and he will help us to the end. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Let us look to the monumental pillars, reminders of what the Lord has done to comfort us and to save us from the hand of the destroyer. Let us keep fresh in our memory all the tender mercies that God has shown us, the tears he has wiped away, the pains he has soothed, the anxieties removed, the fears dispelled, the wants supplied, the blessings bestowed thus strengthening ourselves for all that is before us through the remainder of our pilgrimage. We cannot but look forward to new perplexities in the coming conflict, but we may look on what is past as well as on what is to come and say, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. The trial will not exceed the strength that shall be given us to bear it. Then let us take up our work just where we find it, believing that whatever may come, strength proportionate to the trial will be given. Steps to Christ, page 125. The captain of our salvation will strengthen his people for the conflict in which they must engage. How often when Satan has brought all his forces to bear against the followers of Christ and death stares them in the face, have earnest prayers put up in faith brought the captain of the Lord's host upon the field of action and turned the tide of the battle and delivered the oppressed. Now is the time when we should closely connect with God that we may be hid when the fierceness of his wrath is poured upon the sons of men. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 137. Sunday, March 26. The Battle in Heaven Lucifer was enshrouded with glory as the covering cherub. Yet this angel whom God had created and entrusted with power became desirous of being as God. He gained the sympathy of some of his associates by suggesting thoughts of criticism regarding the government of God. This evil seed was scattered in a most seducing manner, and after it had sprung up and taken root in the minds of many, he gathered the ideas that he himself had first implanted in the minds of others and brought them before the highest order of angels as the thoughts of other minds against the government of God. Thus, by ingenious methods of his own devising, Lucifer introduced rebellion in heaven. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1143. Every man is free to choose what power he will have to rule over him. 
None have fallen so low, none are so vile, but that they can find deliverance in Christ. The demoniac, in place of prayer, could utter only the words of Satan, yet the heart's unspoken appeal was heard. No cry from a soul in need, though it fail of utterance in words, will be unheeded. Those who will consent to enter into covenant relation with the God of heaven are not left to the power of Satan or to the infirmity of their own nature. They are invited by the Savior, let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace with me. Isaiah chapter 27 verse 5. The spirits of darkness will battle for the soul once under their dominion, but angels of God will contend for that soul with prevailing power. The Lord says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? Thus saith the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Isaiah chapter 49 verses 24 and 25 The Desire of Ages, page 258 He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. He who is with Christ, maintaining his unity, and thronging him in the heart, and obeying his orders, is safe from the snares of the wicked one. He who unites himself with Christ will gather to himself the graces of Christ, and will give strength and efficiency and power to the Lord by winning souls to Christ. When Christ takes possession of the citadel of the soul, the human agent becomes one with him. By cooperation with the Savior, he becomes the instrument through which God works. Then when Satan comes and strives to take possession of the soul, he finds that Christ has made him stronger than the strong man armed. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1092. Monday March 27. Satan's Attack Satan in his rebellion took a third part of the angels. They turned from the Father and from his Son and united with the instigator of rebellion. With these facts before us, we should move with the greatest caution. In the world ye shall have tribulation, says Christ, but in me ye shall have peace. The trials to which Christians are subjected in sorrow, adversity, and reproach are the means appointed of God to separate the chaff from the wheat. Our pride, selfishness, evil passions, and love of worldly pleasure must all be overcome. Therefore God sends us afflictions to test and prove us and show us that these evils exist in our characters. We must overcome through his strength and grace that we may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. For our light affliction, says Paul, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Afflictions, crosses, temptations, adversity, and our varied trials are God's workmen to refine us, sanctify us, and fit us for the heavenly garner. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 115. It is one thing to read and teach the Bible and another thing to have by practice its life-giving, sanctifying principles engrafted on the soul. By grace are ye saved through faith, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The mind should be educated to exercise faith rather than to cherish doubt, suspicion, and jealousy. We are too prone to regard obstacles as impossibilities, to have faith in the promises of God, to go forward by faith, pressing on without being governed by circumstances, is a lesson hard to learn. Yet it is a positive necessity that every child of God should learn this lesson. The grace of God through Christ is ever to be cherished, 
for it is given us as the only way of approaching God. In Heavenly Places, page 109. Be ambitious for the Master's glory to cultivate every grace of character. In every phase of your character building, you are to please God. This you may do, for Enoch pleased him though living in a degenerate age, and there are Enochs in this our day. Stand like Daniel, that faithful statesman, a man whom no temptation could corrupt. Do not disappoint him who so loved you that he gave his own life to cancel your sins. He says, Without me, ye can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. Remember this. If you have made mistakes, you certainly gain a victory if you see these mistakes and regard them as beacons of warning. Thus you turn defeat into victory, disappointing the enemy and honoring your Redeemer. Christ's Object Lessons, page 332. Tuesday, March 28. Accepting Jesus' Victory Christ on the cross not only draws men to repentance toward God for the transgression of his law, for whom God pardons he first makes penitent, but Christ has satisfied justice. He has proffered himself as an atonement. His gushing blood, his broken body, satisfy the claims of the broken law, and thus he bridges the gulf which sin has made. He suffered in the flesh, that with his bruised and broken body, he might cover the defenseless sinner. The victory gained at his death on Calvary broke forever the accusing power of Satan over the universe, and silenced his charges that self-denial was impossible with God and therefore not essential in the human family. All who will can be overcomers. Let us strive earnestly to reach the standard set before us. Christ knows our weakness, and to Him we can go daily for help. It is not necessary for us to gain strength a month ahead. We are to conquer from day to day. We become overcomers by helping others to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The keeping of the commandments of God will yield in us an obedient spirit, and the service that is the offspring of such a spirit God can accept. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 974. Satan frequently appears as an angel of light, arrayed in the livery of heaven. He assumes friendly airs, manifesting great sanctity of character and high regard for his victims, the souls whom he means to deceive and destroy. Perils lie in the path which he invites souls to travel, but he succeeds in concealing these and presents the attractions only. The great captain of our salvation has conquered in our behalf, that through him we might conquer, if we would, in our own behalf. But Christ saves none against their choice. He compels none to obedience. He made the infinite sacrifice that they might overcome in his name and his righteousness be imputed unto them. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, page 456. The light from the cross of Calvary is now shining forth in clear, bright rays, revealing Jesus, our sacrifice for sin. As you read the promises which I have set before you, remember they are the expression of unutterable love and pity. The great heart of infinite love is drawn toward the sinner with boundless compassion. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Yes, only believe that God is your helper. He wants to restore his moral image in man. As you draw nigh to him with confession and repentance, he will draw nigh to you with mercy and forgiveness. We owe the Lord everything. He is the author of our salvation. As you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 634. Wednesday, 
March 29, The Woman in the Wilderness While they were under the divine protection, no people or nation, though aided by all the power of Satan, should be able to prevail against them. All the world should wonder at the marvelous work of God in behalf of his people. That Balaam determined to pursue a sinful course should be so controlled by divine power as to utter, instead of imprecations, the richest and most precious promises in the language of sublime and impassioned poetry. And the favor of God at this time manifested toward Israel was to be an assurance of his protecting care for his obedient, faithful children in all ages. When Satan should inspire evil men to misrepresent, harass, and destroy God's people, this very occurrence would be brought to their remembrance and would strengthen their courage and their faith in God. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 449. The messengers of the cross must arm themselves with watchfulness and prayer and move forward in faith and courage, working always in the name of Jesus. They must have confidence in their leader, for troublous times are before us. The judgments of God are abroad in the land. Calamities follow one another in rapid succession. Soon God is to rise out of his place to shake terribly the earth and to punish the wicked for their iniquity. Then he will stand up in behalf of his people and will give them his protecting care. He will throw his everlasting arms about them to shield them from all harm. Gospel Workers, page 264. The presence of God is guaranteed to the Christian. This rock of faith is the living presence of God. The weakest may depend upon it. Those who think themselves the strongest may become the weakest unless they depend on Christ as their efficiency, their worthiness. This is the rock upon which we may build successfully. God is near in Christ's atoning sacrifice, in His intercession, His loving, tender, ruling power over the church. Seated by the eternal throne, He watches them with intense interest. As long as the members of the church shall through faith draw sap and nourishment from Jesus Christ, and not from man's opinions and devisings and methods, if having a conviction of the nearness of God in Christ, they put their entire trust in Him, they will have a vital connection with Christ as the branch has connection with the parent stock. The church is established not on theories of men, on long drawn out plans and forms. It depends upon Christ their righteousness. It is built on faith in Christ, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The strength of every soul is in God and not in man. Quietness and confidence is to be the strength of all who give their hearts to God. Christ has not a casual interest in us, but an interest stronger than a mother for her child. He is watching over you, trembling child of God. He will make you secure under his protection. Sons and Daughters of God, page 77. Thursday, March 30, God's End Time Remnant In the Word of God are represented two contending parties that influence and control human agencies in our world. Constantly, these parties are working with every human being. Those who are under God's control and who are influenced by the heavenly angels will be able to discern the crafty workings of the unseen powers of darkness. Those who desire to be in harmony with the heavenly agencies should be intensely in earnest to do God's will. They must give no place whatever to Satan and his angels. But unless we are constantly on guard, we shall be overcome by the enemy. Although a solemn revelation of God's will concerning us has been revealed to all, yet a knowledge of his will does not set aside the necessity of offering earnest supplications to him for help, and of diligently seeking to cooperate with him in answering the prayers offered. Manuscript 95, 1903 The Christian's hope does not rest upon the sandy foundation of feeling, those who act from principle will behold the glory of God beyond the shadows and rest upon the sure word of promise. They will not be deterred from honoring God, however dark the way may seem. 
Adversity and trial will only give them an opportunity to show the sincerity of their faith and love. Lay hold on the promises of your Heavenly Father and remember His former dealing with you and with His servants, for all things work together for good to them that love God. The most trying experiences in the Christian's life may be the most blessed. The special providences of the dark hours may encourage the soul in future attacks of Satan and equip the servant of God to stand in fiery trials. The trial of your faith is more precious than gold. You must have that abiding confidence in God that is not disturbed by the temptations and arguments of the deceiver. Take the Lord at His word. Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, January 24, 1888 While the Christian's life will be characterized by humility, it should not be marked with sadness and self-depreciation. It is the privilege of everyone so to live that God will approve and bless him. It is not the will of our Heavenly Father that we should be ever under condemnation and darkness. There is no evidence of true humility in going with the head bowed down and the heart filled with thoughts of self. We may go to Jesus and be cleansed and stand before the law without shame and remorse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 through Jesus the fallen sons of Adam become sons of God. Both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. The Christian's life should be one of faith, of victory, and joy in God. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. The Great Controversy, page 477. For further reading, Lift Him Up, This World is a Battlefield, page 253, and Reflecting Christ, Christ's Law is the Law of Love, page 51.